Hey, Las Vegas, welcome back to Realty Check and welcome to the winter. Oh my gosh, it's hot outside. I, it's cold outside. It's it cold outside. It is not hot outside but, anymore. It is cold. It's freezing out there. Well, okay, freezing might be a bit of an exaggeration, but we didn't have any time to acclimate. Yes, it just went from like 90 degrees yesterday to 50 60, degrees 50, today. what is yeah. it? I don't know, but it's cold. 55 when I left my house this morning. Eek. Yes, very cold. So I'm your host, Trish Williams. Here's your uh, local Las Vegas real estate news show. And I'm your co-host, Tiana Carroll. And today we are doing our community spotlight for the month of October, which we're super excited because we have Mandy Medford here from Hypno birthing las vegas dot com did i get it yes. all in there it felt like a mouthful yeah so hi mandy welcome to the show thanks for having me Yay. yes and uh, we're lucky today because mandy is not only just a hypno coach and we're going to talk about her community business that we have here which is the local las vegas business she's also a realtor so she's going to be able to give us some input here when we talk about our real estate news and numbers and headlines and uh, yeah, there wasn't much all in the way of stuff. headlines this week well, I feel like reading the headlines is just repetitive, right? Yeah. It's the same thing. We're seeing the same headlines, the same thing to every day. To go with day. the same numbers. <laughs> yeah, we know that we we know the builders are slowing down on sales. We know that, right? right. Um, yeah. We know that prices are dropping and coming down. We know this. We know that the market is slow. We know that rates are high. We know that they're going to raise again. We've been talking about this for months. What's good is that we haven't had any substantial differences week over week, which I think is an indicator that this is this is the worst of it right now. It's not going to, um, I, I don't think it's going to completely tumble. I have heard some people say that. Okay, yeah, I've heard both sides of the coin, right? Devil the advocate to everything. Yeah. Wish you didn't bring your crystal ball, so we can't really. We wish we had. It, it's Halloween time. <laughs> Where's your crystal ball? <laughs> we need your crystal ball, like, now. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, it's, I, I mean, there's, yeah, you hear two sides of the story, right? You hear a lot of people, they're like, oh, next year at this time, prices are going to be so much lower. I think if that was the case, we would see some substantial changes right now rather than months of just everything staying pretty much the same. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, I mean, so we know that there's most likely going to be an uptick in business come spring. So if people are looking to get into a house, now's a really great time, even with those interest rates. And if you listen to The Economist and people who are in the mortgage and industry, they are basically forecasting that rates are going to stay, you know, kind of where they are within a point, or, right. right? So mm -hmm. not too much. Then they're going to um, start to drop by fall of next year and by um, 20, let's see, four of spring of 24, they're projecting a 4% interest rate again. So if you buy now, then you keep your credit good for that year, year and a half, you can refinance down to that lower interest rate and you won't have to battle um, extra buyers coming in in springtime and you don't have to deal with any of the crazy above to praise value that we saw last spring and summer. And then now you have choices because we have stock. We didn't even do numbers yet. We have stock of um, 7,000. You have to do the numbers. 7,884 homes, single family yep. inventory so on the market. So still playing right under that right 8,000 mark. Has it? 8,000. 8, 8, we have 800 <laughs> homes. Get them now. Yes. <laughs> no, 8,000. 8,000. No, right under 8,000. And then price reduction, 1606. Those actually have dropped a little bit. Yep. So we're like seeing 100. less and less uh, reductions. And I think that's um, because people now are aware that we're out of that frenzy. So when people are taking listings, they're marking, marking them according to what's going on in the market now. Is that what you see in your business? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I think that we, um, we're, we're, we're at a point where um, our sellers are, are at a good opportunity where they can, they're in a position where they can net yeah. um, and really take advantage of the um, you know, equity that they've gained over the last three, four or five years. Yeah, so we're at a point that they're kind of in a good spot too, where they can right. benefit from that equity and still get into something reasonable or even if they want to upgrade. Absolutely. You could still walk away with profit. That's what a lot of sellers, I think, are, are, are having a hard time 
you know, just, just grasping this concept. You're still walking away with profit. Sure. You're not walking away negatively. Right. It's just not as much profit as it was earlier in this year, but I, I mean, let's be happy for the gains, right? Yeah, yeah, there's still profit. We just can't be as greedy as we could have been. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I think you said it perfectly. That was all, well, I'm glad you said it. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah. I don't wanna say those, but I mean, listen, they did, if they didn't have to buy in the same market, then they did even better, right? Because right. if they were moving to a slower market right. where the price point was lower, then they sell here, make a ton of cash, and they're just sitting fat and happy. Yay, they don't care about inflation. <laughs> But, Absolutely. Yeah, but uh, there's still the opportunity. You know, we talked about it a few different times on the show that the one of the contributing circumstances to the market we're in now versus the bubble is that we have equity in homes now, which mm -hmm. we didn't have back then. Absolutely. And, and I, I do think that um, the steadiness that we've had over the last couple months, even though it's not like great steadiness, nothing big is happening which I think is an indicator that we're not going to see a substantial dip. Um, again, it's all it's all guesswork at this point. Right. So, and anything could happen. Anything could happen globally. Anything could happen. Right. We all know from COVID, right. we never no know one could have that. what what what's going to you know hit us with and and change that. You know, I I heard something the other day that said that all of the funds that were put into our economy during COVID actually delayed a looming dip yeah. in, um, in, in, real, in the real estate market, which they said was coming around 2019. And then COVID hit, all these funds are thrown into the economy. People started buying, the, the market started increasing. That that, crazy that's another, market. yeah, mm -hmm. that's another, a, another idea. And that could be, However, in 2019, I didn't see any dip coming. I thought 2019 was a very good, very healthy market. Right. Yeah, I, I like all of it. I'm 17, <laughs> 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. It's yeah. all fun. It's yeah. all good. You're able to help your clients. Right. And so it's just navigating the market. And that's sort of the thing that I like about real estate. It's not very monotonous. I mean, it is in the paperwork, it's all the same, right? right. <laughs> but um, things that are different are negotiations in the contract. And if you're dealing with buyers or sellers, right. like right now I'm calling this period uh, my nurture because I have um, so many fewer clients now than I did when the frenzy was happening. But now it's getting everybody prepared and giving them the time that they need and whatever. So even though I'm working, it's less contracts, but mm -hmm. it's all foundation and groundwork right. for what I assume is going to be that uptick again come spring. Yeah. And you know, right now, if you qualified for like a VA <clears throat> loan, for instance, zero, yeah, yeah. zero down, you can get in a home with zero down, right? You know, you have what, $550 for your appraisal, but right. sellers are paying those costs. You can literally get in that home for less than a thousand dollars because we can get sellers to cover those costs. You know, again, negotiation, contract, those are all specific, but people don't understand the opportunity that there is right now. And right. people really, I, I, I just can't stress it enough. I think people should take advantage of that opportunity. And if you're making an offer on a home and the seller is not willing to work with you, move on to another one. There's going to be a seller out there that's willing to work with you, willing to do that. They're going to be motivated mm -hmm. enough to sell that home. And I just don't see that being an option for years over years. I think we're in a small window right now where that's a possibility. Right. Yeah, that's what I keep saying. I'm like, we're making really good things happen for buyers and sellers. Yeah. And it's a breath of fresh air that we're able to create opportunity, good opportunity on both sides. Absolutely. And I think we go into real estate because we generally want, we, we want to help people. We want to pass along a well-loved home to someone who's going to enjoy it, a place that they're going to be comfortable. And we were in that frenzy of, oh my gosh. Yeah. And, and now we're at a point where, um, you know, at the end of the day, I feel like we come to the closing table and we have a lot of happy people. Yeah. <laughs> because because we all were able to negotiate effectively yeah. on behalf of both sides. They're not so like, what did I just do? Right. <laughs> right. Well, yeah. Win. And when we're in those unbalanced markets, it's hard for us to really feel great about our job because one of it's our hard. clients is always right. feeling like they're getting the short end of the right. stick. Right. But now we seem to be, have happy, happy, happy customers. Well, yeah. Clients. Sellers are glad that they just sold. Old, yep. And um, buyers are glad because they, they actually got a favorable deal. And again, another thing that someone um, had, you know, ran, put some numbers in front of me the other day, 
and prices the way that they were before versus where they are right now with the rates risen, the, the price difference you're looking at monthly payment is literally hundreds if there is a difference. Right. So the adjustment has really happened where whether you bought at the top of the market at a higher price or you're buying right now at a lower price with a higher rate, you're really, your, your monthly payment is, is generally in the same ballpark. So mm -hmm. that's a consideration that people need to think about too. Um, you know, it's, it's really, it's the same house versus, you know, whatever payment you have. The benefit of right now is that if you bought the house at a higher price, if you bought the house at $50,000 higher than what you're buying it at today, mm -hmm. you're going to have to pay that down. That, that doesn't go away. Yet, if you buy your house right now at a higher interest rate, you have the opportunity to refinance that later and get that payment lower. So that's, to me, more bang for your buck. Um, yeah. But, uh, well, but it's... Me too. Yeah, <laughs> I like you it. agree. Yeah. I agree. I, I agree. agree. Yeah, you're not going to get fifty thousand dollars off that house unless you pay fifty thousand dollars down right. on that house. Exactly you know, right. and and but but then again, all the buyers were like, "Wow, this is a great market when the prices are higher and the interest are lower." And now that the it's the other way around, they're like, "This horrible market. I'm not buying." It's crazy. People are crazy. So in news. Um, Zillow had some substantial layoffs. We're seeing this across the board again. I feel like a broken record. All of these companies are laying off right now. Yeah. 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 Lenders and Zillow and everybody's doing their adjustments. What does Zillow's people do? Well, I know they don't return calls, so <laughs> I don't know what to tell does you. Does Zillow now. even have a phone number? Uh, I, I know we always get on Zillow and give them heck or whatever, but they're... In my opinion, they created that damage themselves by the way they come into a business that they're not really a business part of. I mean, they're not an MLS service. They're just this right. sort of but, capture site to sell right. us leads. Yep. But who works there? Like, is there like, is there a lot of people at Zillow? Is there like five? Well, like, there's less now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just don't understand like who works there. Cause to, I, I mean, Zillow is a website, but they don't, they're not buying homes or selling no, homes. Not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> they so, learned like, their lesson. What are the people that work there doing and how many people does it take to manage their website? Well, I guess they sell leads. They do well, sell yeah, leads. Yeah, their actual business, yeah. what I was getting to was that their business isn't a real estate business. No. It's masquerading as one, and the world believes it as one, and people reference it as one. Their data but the capture. reality, right? Their data capture. They um, show the world the possibility of homes. And listen, who doesn't love to window shop, right? Right. So looking at beautiful homes right. online is fun. But every time you put your phone number or your email in that site, it's all of a sudden cha ching. I'm gonna sell it to the highest bidder. Who wants it? because it's a lead. And in this business, you're always hustling to get your next contract. Yep, absolutely. So speaking of businesses, let's talk about a better business model. <laughs> yes, <laughs> than Zillow. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So we have you here today, Mandy, because we wanna hear all about this hypnobirthing. Like hypno, like hypnotizing, like birthing, hypnosis, yeah. hypnosis yeah. birthing. Yeah. What is this? Tell us a little bit about it's it. It's the coolest thing in the world. Sounds and, like it. Um, Look I at always the excitement. Start, you like it's it lit up I just when you love said it. that. I do love it. And um, first off, I always tell people my, my children are the reason I do what I do at the end of the day. Like they're the reason why I live and breathe and why I get out and want to help people in the community. And my, my big passion really is helping families, mothers, kids. Um, I think that the way children come into the world impact them for the rest of their life. And there's also really cool things that happen along the way. Um, sometimes birth trauma happens and we see it happen more and more than it needs to in the United States because of the fact that we've over medicalized birth and because parents don't feel like they have the power to get in the driver's seat and make the decisions on behalf of themselves. I think as mothers, we've sort of like over generations, we've almost sort of like surrendered our, like we've learned our power. Yeah, we've been taught to quiet that voice inside of us. And I think for me and for my kids, like I, I'm going to be a darn well educated as I can be because I'm making decisions on behalf of a human being that can't speak for themselves huh. or who can't make decisions for themselves. Right. And so when we can empower mothers and when we can support mothers in a non-judgmental, just like, here's how I can help you. Let me give you the information. You decide what to do with it. 
okay. when I stand in front of a group of people, I, you know, I'm very clear. There's not a wrong way to do this. Like there's right. not a wrong way to give birth. You're going to do it based on what you believe is best for your family medically. Whether okay. you go like completely natural, I had two home births, like whether you do that or whether you decide you want to have a fully medicalized birth in a hospital and you need surgery, I just want to make sure you have the information so that your baby can be born as gently as possible. And so you are treated well because you're going to remember this experience for the rest of your life. Right. So um, hypnobirthing is as much a philosophy as it is a technique. It's a relaxing, rewarding, sort of stress-free method of birth that's based on the belief that every baby deserves to be born into an environment of joy, gentility, calm, and joy. And when parents feel emotionally, physically, psychologically prepared, they get a grasp of that joy. They get to be fully a part of the process of welcoming this new human being into their family. And these tools and techniques, we hear this word hypnosis and we're like, what the heck? Yeah, yeah. Um, I was intrigued when yeah. I heard about it. So what hypnosis does is it just helps you get to this place of complete and total surrender so that you can call upon and use the instincts that you were born with. Like your body knows um, how to give birth. Like it's not about teaching you how to give birth. It's right. about helping you get your mind out of the way so your body can take the lead and then you can have a comfortable gentle, safe experience. So we very much dispel the myths that birth has to be extraordinarily painful. Like we dispel that myth right off the bat. Like it's not the necessary evil. We've been sold this idea that birth has to hurt and it has to be incredibly painful. And therefore we need to learn how to like cope with that or like power through it. Right. right? When I, when I had, when I had my, my children, um, we did Lamaze classes. Yeah. It's like, you know, teaches you how to breathe, you know, whatever. Right. Yeah. <laughs> teaches you how to breathe to relieve the pain or to calm yourself or something like that. So this sounds like it's better than that. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's uh it's, it's it's an intensive program because we give them within the, we have five main techniques relaxation breathing uh, visualization self hypnosis and deepeners and affirmations so hypnosis is one element but within these sort of like five main pillars many different tools under each of those categories so that we can help parents get to a place of surrender and when they do their birthing muscles are free of tension and then they can perform exactly as nature intended so when your muscles are deprived, like anything, it hurt. It's going to hurt. Yeah. Like yeah. if you're tense, it's going to hurt. It's called fear, tension, pain. And it's a well-documented, uh, <clears throat> well-researched um, understanding that when your mind, when you're in a place of fight or flight, and whether it's a real danger or a perceived danger, it doesn't matter in your mind. Every thought has a physiological and chemical response in our bodies. Facts. Okay. So if you are afraid, like whether I close my eyes, I tell my clients, like I know it's a silly example, but if I close my eyes and I imagine that there's a bear staring me in the face, or I'm like physically standing something like there's a bear coming at me, in my mind it's all happening. Right. right. And so you secrete catecholamines, stress hormones, they redirect all the oxygenated blood in your body to your arms and your legs so you can fight for your life or get the heck out of there. Wow. And because your uterus has not been designated for your survival, like your uterus isn't getting you out of a dangerous situation, what's it going to do? It has one choice, and that's freeze. So it becomes oxygen deprived. It mm. doesn't get blood flow. It's tense. And any other muscle in your body that's trying to do like an extreme event, like birth, and you're, I mean, I don't mean to make it like an extreme sport, but I mean, it's well, a big it's thing for your body to do. <laughs> it's it's kind, and it's a, like yeah. a really important <laughs> job that your uterus knows how to do, but it can't do it well without oxygen and blood. And if I'm not breathing properly for me, I'm going to have a hard time breathing for that baby. So then we worry, you know, baby's heart rate, we worry about that, and then moms don't progress, and then we're like, Oh, she's a failure. To, she's a failure. She's a failure to progress. Like she is just stuck. And, and most of the time that goes back to how we're treating her in labor. What's going on? We're mammal mothers. Yeah. Um, and like mothers, we would never intentionally bring our children into a dangerous situation. Like you'd never do that. You'd never bring your kids around dangerous people. Yeah. So why on earth? Like, oh, I'm going to let my baby be born into a room of people I don't like or that are being mean to me or who are yelling at me or it's a you know sterile sort of scary environment. So we spend a lot of time dispelling the myths and helping parents prepare so that they can go into whatever birth space they've chosen, whether they're going to the hospital, whether they're going home, you know, your instinct or giving birth at home, like your instinct is gonna call you to where you need to birth your baby. And if you wanna give birth in a hospital, you darn well deserve to be treated well there 
and to have your expectations and have your birth plan reasonably accommodated. So we help them understand how to politely communicate, organize that birth plan, what to expect when they get there, how to like bring all the amazing energy from home into the birth space. So we create beautiful labor spas and you know we oh. talk about how you can like bring all your stuff and, and how do we just transfer the amazing energy for mama bear from her house into where she's gonna birth her baby. Right. So like hospitals have this, you know, you go there because you're sick, right? But like, think about the labor and delivery wing of the hospitals where all the happy happens. Yeah. And so I tell parents like, you're not walking in as a sick person needing rescue. Birth is not a medical event, it's a life experience. Right. We've normalized the medicalization of birth, but like 90 to 95% of the time when a healthy mom's carrying a healthy baby, she can expect, if she wants a healthy natural vaginal birth, like it's a reasonable expectation, but we have to support her emotionally or she won't be comfortable and it'll be harder. So our philosophy, and we, we do little exercises to kind of like show people how like when your muscles are working normally, it doesn't hurt. It only hurts when there's a disruption. Wow. So we refuse to buy into the myth that your birthing muscles are the only muscles in your body that are destined to experience extreme pain and discomfort when they're doing exactly what they were intended to do. Right. Like, I don't promise people pain-free birth. I can't tell you that. <laughs> but I can tell you that there is no physiological need for the level of discomfort that we hear surrounding childbirth as often as we do. Wow. And so that's um, that yeah. that that's pretty that that's pretty amazing. And and you always do hear when you think about it, you just hear like pain and suffering. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I have a lot of people and friends and stories that I've heard where the pregnancy, the birth, everything was such a nightmare yeah. for them. Not for me. For me, it was magic. I loved it all. It was like, I felt so beautiful. I felt the most feminine and the most vibrant I ever felt than when I was pregnant. Like I'm creating life yeah. and my family's growing and what have you. So I, I didn't want to hear all of the, but however I did cheat, I totally epidural out. Oh, don't say that cheat. You, you do what your instincts are calling you to do. And I, it's so cool because you communicate that to your child. Like we want you, you're yeah. welcome. And they hear it, they know it. Again, this is scientifically, like, there's so much going on. But, I mean, babies have are having a real experience now. Yeah, like, yeah. I they, didn't want any trauma. I was like, when they said, okay, you can have an epidural, I'm like, like all right, let's do it. Awesome. Yeah, no, during the entire labor yeah. process, I had my family around me. We were awesome. talking. We were snacking. It's welcomed with love. <laughs> and yeah. that's what it's about, right? And, like, you, you make a conscious decision based on the information at hand. And that's what we try to help people understand. Like, please just treat me according to my own personal medical needs now because we've, in this amazing country we live in, when we're, we actually do have a lot of medical technology available to us. Right. And thank God we do. Mm -hmm. Because 5 to 10% of the time, birth truly medically needs help. And, like, I'm grateful to God Almighty that we have what we have available to us. It's just like we've taken something that only needed help like this much of the time, and we jump in and try to fix it before there's anything broken. And when you start to try to tinker with a physiological process of the human body, the body sort of like takes itself out of the equation. Right. Yeah. Or we try to fix it. Yeah. So. Now, how, how did you, how did you end up here? How did you get, how did you get into this? Where yeah. did that come from? I, um, I was pregnant with Mackenzie. I found out I was pregnant with her in February of 2007. She's going to be 15 on Sunday. Okay. Actually, she's my little Halloween baby. No. Um, oh, happy birthday, Mackenzie. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, she, she's very proud of her accomplishments as of late. So, um, but yo, so she's gonna be 15. So when I was found out I was pregnant with her, I, um, just, I was scared to death. I had been married for like eight months or something. And I come from a huge Catholic family. And so of course, like I'm the oldest of the grandkids. There's always kids around. We love life. We love family, but I never heard a birth story. I wanted to like hear again. <laughs> right. And I was scared. I was so scared. So um, my mom was like, well, I'll call, you know, my doctor. Like, it was just, you're going to just fall. You know, it's fine. Here's my doctor. And I waited on hold and I hung up the phone. And I thank God I did because I was scared to death to make that phone call because I was afraid. I was afraid of like just surrendering my power to somebody else. Right. And I felt like that's what it, birth always looked like to me. It's like somebody else was in charge and I didn't want that. I didn't want the idea that I wasn't going to be controlling myself or wasn't you know, just didn't feel like I'd be able to speak up for myself. So I had a friend. My best friend, Anne, had a friend 
who became a friend of mine, and she had just had a natural home birth and did hypnobirthing. Oh. And, and so she like told this story of how she had her baby on her bathroom floor, and, and we were like, whoa, okay, who does that? But <laughs> wow. Anyway, then I had two kids at home in a tub upstairs in my loft. But at that oh, time, wow. it was like, whoa. And, and so Missy said to me, Mandy, like, just take it one step at a time. She put me in touch with a hospital-based midwife, which was amazing for me because we got great care, but a more like human experience. And we signed up for these hypnobirthing classes. And my husband's like, listen, I, like, I'm not getting on board with home birth this time. I can't do it. Even though I wanted it. And now he goes back and he's like, yeah, we could have stayed home. Totally stayed home. But uh, <laughs> that's funny. all right. You know, well, we had the other two at home. He's like, yeah, this is way better uh, it, for our family. I mean, it was, yeah. but um, anyway, so Missy had taken a class, signed up for hypnobirthing. Mandy, sign up. We signed up and we took the class summer of 07. And after the first class, I remember like my husband sitting next to me the whole time. He's like, I'll do anything you want to do. We just have to have the baby at the hospital. He's like, you want me to hypnotize you? I'll hypnotize you all day long. <laughs> um, but I was like, this is not just about that. She sat there and spent the three hours. And class one's really about that, like laying the foundation of how birth is natural, normal and healthy most of the time. And even when it needs help. We still have tools and techniques to make that happen more gently. So I was just walking away every week, like super passionate and um, ended up going through the program. We had Mackenzie all natural. And when she was six months old, I went and got certified. At that time, I was teaching first grade at the, I'm Vegas native. So I was teaching first grade at the Catholic school that I grew up at. And I um, didn't want to work full time in that field because I had a baby. So yeah. Um, I was like, I'm, I, I have a teacher's heart. I have always wanted to teach. And so I was like, well, I want to teach this. Like people have to know. And, and it was just, I felt every week I was leaving that class feeling like I wanted to shout from the rooftops. Like people need to know this. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're yeah. obviously very passionate. I, I, the, I, I could the see way it your face over. changed. Like go back <laughs> and watch the videos. The way your face changed when you started from, talking from real estate. <laughs> <laughs> no birthing. It was like, oh, real estate's fun, and then you're like, real estate ah, is fun. I love this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's great. And, so, and one of the things that you told me earlier, which I think is amazing, is that you've you've sold yeah. some of the homes Most. where you birth. Yeah, um, <laughs> where people have given birth. <laughs> where, <laughs> My clients have clients given birth in their homes. In their homes. Yeah, and it, that is that yeah. is really wow. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. That, so I'll go through a, like a listing appointment and client and be like, oh, by the way, hmm? thanks for the techniques, Mandy. The baby was born right here. <laughs> um, so do you put that in the listing? No. Yeah. 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 Born no. In no. <laughs> healthy birth <laughs> happened in this healthy bathroom. Birth happened right here. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Um, but what a, what an experience because I, I mean it is it's just being part of like an amazing part of somebody's life right yeah yep and I'm really well tied into the birth community here so I'm like my mom in that when I learn to do when I'm gonna like do something I'm gonna jump in with two feet and I'm gonna introduce myself to everybody I can and network and get a group of people around me that can help the greater cause and so I just got a chat. I really got involved in the birth community here. I work with an amazing organization called Well-Rounded Mama. I teach over there. I've got an amazing chiropractor in Northwest Las Vegas. I teach out of her off office. They both offer me just a beautiful open space. And, um, you know, because of that, I, I've taught, I teach over a hundred, 150 couples plus or minus, um, every year, but wow. you know, so we, it's not just about the hypnosis aspect. Um, but it certainly helps. And, you know, when you think about hip, you know, it's not about like we're going to sit here and hypnotize moms all day long. <laughs> hypnosis, all hypnosis is self-hypnosis. All you need is an understanding and a willingness. So we teach partners to help guide moms into just a very deeply relaxed state. Meditation is the same as hypnosis, is the same as just being very deeply like relaxed. Like if you've ever closed your eyes and imagine you're on the beach, like yeah. you've been in hypnosis, it's not a big concept that we, like we've overcomplicated it. But uh, much like giving birth, <laughs> much like that. Yeah. So we teach our moms, we teach our partners how to do that. We have moms, you know, oftentimes moms will come with a partner, but oftentimes they won't. And what's so cool about the techniques is no matter what, you can either self-guide or have the partner's help. And your practice throughout the time, you know, it's like hypnosis is like anything, your practice of, of any skill or any tool, like the more you do it, the more it's going to serve you when you need it. That's awesome. So, um, but we teach different breathing techniques for the different stages of labor so that we can maximize what the uterus is doing 
when you're having contractions. We've changed the language surrounding childbirth. That's a big thing with hypnobirthing. Um, <laughs> like we really were careful about our words because the only way your mind can react to language is with emotion. Um, and that emotion creates a physiological response in your body. So again, I go back to my mom. First, you have to believe and you don't take action until you do. Right. So we have to be careful about the words and the language that we're using because we are shaping people's belief system, even as realtors. Like, yeah, absolutely. We can't be doom and gloom all day. We have yeah. to provide opportunities. <laughs> we have to say, this is how I can help you today. Yeah. These are the opportunities available to you today. Yeah. I'm happy to help you take advantage of them. Absolutely. Um, can we hypnotize our clients? Yeah. You can't. Just relax. <laughs> it's all going to be Listen, fine. Listen, take, take a break. Take a break. Visualize. Mandy, there is so much to this. When um, when should people contact you and how do they contact you and how do people get started to even learn more about this if they're, if they're in this point in their life? <clears throat> so they can contact me anytime they want. I tell them that it's never too soon to start taking the classes. So okay. even if I can catch you um, at the, at the you know, 20 week mark of your pregnancy, um, it's great, but I catch people sometimes at 33 weeks and we still get them taken care of. It's a five week class, once okay. a week for five weeks. Um, but I also teach in private so I can be coming to their home too. And, and I can, I can accommodate that way as well and still cover the whole program. So it's never too soon. It's never too late. And my website has a ton of information about the program. And they we can have always a call. Yeah, yeah. Give us your website oh, and hip, your contact yep. information. Uh, hypnobirthinglasvegas.com. So H-Y-P-N-O, hypnobirthinglasvegas.com. And they can call me. Should I give them my number? Yeah. 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 702 <laughs> I'm also on Instagram at hypnobirthinglv if you ever want to con uh, contact me that way. And I think if you are uh, looking to build a family, even if, if you're planning on, even if you're not pregnant yet, it's still a good time to absolutely. set that up, correct? Sure. Absolutely. If you're planning on building a family. Absolutely. And it yeah. feels like the techniques that you are teaching is going to benefit the mother and the family in the long run, absolutely. even past birth, because I know there's been a few times where I wanted to take some heads off at my yep. house, yep. but yep. I needed to like just breathe and take yep. a beat and relax and be like, okay, this is how we're going to deal with it and everybody's going to be alive at the yeah. end. Yay. I get that feedback a lot from my clients that, you know, that when they're parenting the toddler, they're <laughs> going back to their hypnobirthing. That, that's great. Breathing, that's great. their Learning. visualization. Learning better, better calming Coping techniques. Tools. So yeah, yeah that's, yeah. that's wonderful. Hypnobirthing, well, not just um, for childbirth. Right. <laughs> nope. Hypnosis for life. <laughs> well, yeah, that is, I, I, I if somebody is uh, planning a family, if you're pregnant right now and you're very um, scared about the process and what's going to be happening here, contact Mandy. Get started on this. It sounds like an amazing prop, uh, program. So, Thanks yes. so much. Um, and people out there, we are having a trunk or treat tomorrow at our Henderson office, October 28th, um, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m., Come out there and join us. Bring kids um, free for the whole family. The address is 2230 Corporate Circle, Suite 250. It's the Keller Williams office. But we'll be in the Green Valley Parkway lot. in the you'll 215. <laughs> yeah, you'll see us. There's a lot. There's a, there's a haunted house there. So please come out. Say hi. Bring your kids. Are you going to be there, Tiana? Uh, yes-ish. Yes, it's possible. Ish. Well, I, I heard Corella <laughs> Deville is yeah, going to be yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Corella Deville is going to be there. Yeah, and and, and Galinda will be there. So <laughs> I I will see you there. And are you coming? We're probably stopping by. We're all doing right. a big move this weekend. My uh, sister and right. my children want to go to the Knights game. So we're going to work it all in. Work it all in. <laughs> Come out and say hi, people. So it's a free event. We'll see you there. And if you're watching our show, like, comment, share. Tell your friends about us, and we will see you next week. Yes, but if you need to get a hold of Trisha oh. I, <laughs> yes. here's how we're going to do that. You're going to call me or text me at 702-379-9948. And Trish, how do they find you? 702-308-2878. Yeah. Right. Now you know how to get a hold of all of us. All, all of us. You got our numbers, <laughs> and we'll see you guys next week. Thank you. Have a good week, Vegas. We'll see you next week.